All right, so this is a very, very long overdue update video. Um, I'll come back and I'll talk about what's new in here in a little bit. But first, I gotta wanna show you some stuff out back on upcoming things. Um, the reason it's been so long since the video, it's kind of a long story. So last video I think you saw was about three weeks ago on uh, finishing up them two tractors, the GT18 and the 16T. Um, about a week before that video went live, I was working on my forklift, which is, you know, that big yellow one I made. And uh, I dropped the whole back end of it. It slipped off of the jack. And my, I had my finger in one of the dumbest spots I think I ever could have had it, which was basically right in here. And I uh, slipped off the jack and it dropped about 1,500 pounds on my finger. So I had 10 stitches in my finger and uh, I'm mostly recovered from it. I can't quite bend it, but I got all the feeling back. So that happened. Um, I dropped my phone, which is also my camera, which is what you're watching now, and broke the screen, which that was $100, which I was able to fix myself at least. Um, and then after that, we got working on our house, which is not a small project, which you'll see that towards the end of the video. Uh, but in the meantime of basically kind of doing nothing because of my finger, um, I got new computer stuff, which is my other hobby. So the quality of my videos from this point forward will definitely go up. And I got some really awesome projects planned. And I'm going to be showing you that here. And it's going to be happening very soon. So first things first is this 18.6. Uh, pretty much guarantee I'm going to be putting an 18 horse uh, V-twin in here. Uh, Vanguard V-twin, just like the last two of them I did. Um, unless, of course, this Onan works, then I'm going to use that, but I kind of doubt it. Uh, the Super 12, that's going to be a restoration coming up. Um, there's part of the dilemma with the forklift is it got a different engine, so here's the old engine from it. Um, dang it. Tripped over the tractor there, but I'm good. So here's the Kawasaki from that, which... I thought I would have been able to show you, but can't really. But it started overheating and not knowing that it was overheating. And uh, started knocking like crazy. So I replaced it with a Honda GX390. And that's what's currently in there. But I'll show you that more towards the end of the video. Um, got this custom, which was supposed to be my next project until the episode I had happened. But I've got a Honda G. C160 or something like that to go in here. That'll be coming up soon. Uh, sometime this winter is this uh, Suburban 15. Um, Roper 20T is in here. I decided to put the road grader inside. I had it sitting outside, but it turns out there's no seal in the top of the steering box. So it started to get really stiff and it actually rusted so tight. Had to put some PB blaster in there and eventually it freed up. So no longer going to park this outside i guess so um next thing here i'm going to show you is something i think is pretty exciting so you probably remember from several videos that have failed which is kind of sucks uh this clunker which it currently has the steering setup in it which doesn't work and it has a belt drive hydro that is back there uh hydraulic motors directly in the wheels which this thing it basically it failed because well the original project it was supposed to have uh chains going from the back tire to the front tire and like two levers so it was supposed to be like a miniature bulldozer but that video for that didn't even see the light today because it was a huge fail it didn't really work but i got the parts for it yesterday um i went to another auction and I bought another reel mower, which has two more roller motors that I'm going to put on the front, which I'll show you this in a little bit. I'm going to put them motors on the front. I got a huge hydraulic motor that's going to, or a pump that's going to go about right here. A 35 horse V-twin. i um, not entirely sure how I'm, exactly I'm going to do this, but it's also going to have power steering. So this here is going to go. I have this power steering uh, like unit right here that is attached to a steering column. So that's gonna be going on this. So if you were following with that, it's gonna have a 35 horse engine, 
which runs great, power steering, and four-wheel drive on a Sears tractor. So I don't know when that's gonna happen, but I have everything for it, and I know pretty much how I'm gonna do it. It's basically just the matter of actually doing it. So that'll be coming up. There's this thing here, which is just kind of like my frame, I guess I piled parts on. Um, I got my Murray built uh, GT16 uh, Sears, uh, which that one I've had for a while and I kind of lost interest in it, but I'll come up with something for it eventually. Um, I guess I can show you in the blue shed here, a couple of random uh, Craftsman transaxles there. And then I got my outdoor tire pile. And then uh, in here I got my my John Deere grass cutter, which it goes through the gas like crazy. So I've been wanting to do a diesel swap in it. So it's like my X595, but diesel, or uh, I guess that's diesel, but this would be the two wheel drive version. There's a creepy spider for you. Yuck. That's why I see in videos when I, I pressure wash tractors before I like work on them. That is why. Um, but anyway, that's why I was saying. And this has, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know, but the hood's stuck. I've been trying to get it open, but this has a gas engine and I was trying to figure out on a, a diesel engine to fit it, which recently I added a uh, water temp gauge because uh, the original one quit working. So now I have a water temp gauge. Uh, it's a mechanical one because I don't like uh, the electrical ones. They kind of don't work, so. I went with a mechanical one, so I got my 18.6 over here, and it's uh, it hasn't ran in a while, so I'm I'm due to get this out. Got my 74 SS16, and then of course my uh, 66 Suburban 12 with the big tires, and then uh, big ugly my 74, yeah 74 ST16 with. Uh, the black ghost grill. So I think that's it in there. Um, next is the enclosed trailer, which reminds me, uh, people ask me all the time, when am I gonna go back to the Indiana place and uh, like next, next year? And it'll probably happen. I just don't know when. That's pretty much something we make up like five days before we go type of a thing. Like quite literally like five days before we're there is when we decide we're going. So, but it'll probably happen, um, which this is the trailer we use. Uh, it's 24 feet long. Uh, we pull it behind a 40 foot motor home actually. So it's quite the sight when we get there. Um, but holds 10, 10 to 11 machines, no problem. As long as they don't have all the parts on them. Uh, but currently I got my uh, single cylinder GT18 in here and the uh, GT199 as as well as my uh, fake Roper wagon, which this is just a cheap wagon. I paid like hundred bucks brand new for a couple years ago and put a Roper sticker on it. Um, that's all that's in here. I moved all the other stuff back in the main shed, which is where I'm headed to now. So... There's not a whole lot has happened on the rest of the collection. All that's pretty much the pretty much the same. Um, I have been driving tractors. I drive between one and two a day. The one day I drove drove like four or five. So, um, uh, sixty nine uh, suburban twelve. This is one of the last ones I did. Uh, this thing runs great. I drove that like a week ago. And I got my other one, which is restored, but not as nice. Which is kind of funny, it's restored, but it kind of sucks. It's not, it's mainly it sucks because the transmission's loud, and it doesn't have a factory engine, which is what it is. Uh, 67 Super 12 with the original to come, so that runs good. Got my uh, fake 1970 Hydrotrack 12. And then we've got, I don't even know which one this is. I think this is 67. Yeah, 67 Super 12. 67 Suburban 10, 
all the red ropers um roper 18t hydro right here underneath this which this is pretty much right where this was always parked um the other uh 16t this is something i find really cool is that it's finally happened where i don't think i showed this before but both the ss14 and hydro track 14 identical machines other than one's a hydro and one's a stick shift are finally next to each other which i just think is so awesome um it would be nice to have a factory engine in ss14 but it, it is what it is. At least it runs and drives for now. But I just think this is so cool to have them both and to have them both right next to each other. Um, got the SS16, the SS18, 166, 18 twin hydro, ST12, ST16. Uh, my 72 Suburban 12, which was the orange and black one, uh, it's now in this condition now, which it would be done, except I don't have a front grill for it. So I'm basically, I'm looking for that and here it sits till I find a front grill. I've got the hood right here. It's pretty much painted. I got some touch up to do in the vents on the inside, but that's pretty much painted. I've got a seat somewhere around here and I have a steering wheel. I don't know where the steering wheel went, but there's a players on there, I guess. So it's got a fake steering wheel. Got the customs here in custom corner. Um... I got to get the stuff off of this one because this one's the next one to drive. And then after that, will be the one behind it. Uh, this is one of the next ones to restore. And I keep saying I'm keep saying I'm going to do it. And I never do, it seems like. But it is going to be coming probably sometime this winter. Um, it's painted that verde green. And people seem to think that that's close to the original color. Um, it's close to what they fade to because like this here, that Super 12, that's faded to like a greenish. But if you actually split the frame, like take the frame apart, like right here, you can see underneath where it wasn't in the daytime and since the factory, you can see that it is in fact not green. It's totally, it's blue. It's blue like, like that kind of blue. So I'm going to repaint it back to the color it's supposed to be, not this green, because since the green faded, it looked okay at first. It looks kind of ugly now, uh, four years later, so going to get that fixed eventually um uh 68 suburban 12 and then a 68 uh orange hydro track behind it and then here are um my two 68s one's original and one's restored uh 68 hydros and then these are the 68 stick shifts so there's a i guess you probably saw these before but there's another look at them they're these four, basically, they're the, all the same thing except stick shift and hydro, which this is another thing I think is cool that I have two hydros that are identical and two stick shifts that are identical, just restored and unrestored. So it's kind of like them. Um, Suburban 15, oh, that runs good, except it has a really bad crankcase side cover oil leak uh, right on the right uh, crankshaft. Uh, it pours out like crazy when it's running. So I can't get the pulley off. I tried and tried and tried. So the only way to get that pulley off is to basically cut it off. And I haven't felt like doing that yet. So there it is on there yet. So that's one of the next things I need to figure out eventually here. Suburban 14, Suburban 12, the little mini more. Uh, that one I had running about a month ago. Um, the Suburban 10 electric, uh, that is doing great. Other than the last time I drove it, uh, the one of the cells in the battery decided to not work anymore. So the one battery only holds 11 volts. And the other battery holds perfectly fine at like 12.8. So that's annoying, but whatever. Um, it just means it's a little slower now. I got my uh, 66 Suburban 12 with a Tecumseh 11 horse in it, which this thing ran better before. And then recently it kind of runs bad. Um... It's gotten to the point where I have to pour a little bit of gas in the carburetor before I run it. But once I do that, it typically it fires right up. So the 16.6 that's always gets parked by the stairs and never seems to move. I gave up on the Onan and I put a Chinese life in engine in it, which I know people are going to hate me, but it is what it is. I needed parts for another Onan and this one here had problems, so I 
cram that in there. Um, got my really nice running uh, Onan powered 78 GT18. Uh, this one I think still has a battery in it. I drove this like three or four days ago. Um, the 500,000. Uh, 500,000 actually has the Onan from that machine, which it doesn't run very good, but it does run sort of. So that's here. Um, the, the engine that was in the 500,000 when I did that video of it, um, it didn't blow up. It just decided to blow all the oil seals apart. So it started leaking oil from every spot possible. And uh, that's actually still sitting right here. Like leaking oil from everywhere. I think it just has a lot of blow by and the carburetor doesn't seem quite right. Also, the one exhaust port is stripped out. Um, I think it's this one. You can see them threads don't look very good there. I guess actually it's the other side. This side here ain't too bad. The other side, um, which I'm not going to move. Um, it's not very good. But here's all the parts I was talking about before I got off the real mower. So, well, here's a, the motor for one side and then there's the motor for the other side. I just, I took a reciprocating saw and I just chopped the whole things off for now. So, the ports are right here. I just put duct tape on to cover them, but... The plan is, is to make a custom front axle with some type of a pipe welded to the back of this with like a, a C on the side of the axle that that can pivot on. And then weld the arm coming off of here with tie rod with a spot to mount a hydraulic cylinder. And then uh, got to figure out how to tee everything together. Here's the hydraulic pump, which this thing is kind of crazy. You got one that drives the machine. One for power steering, and then one for each of the reels. Then there's the other side motor for it. And then here's all these hydraulic motors that I got off of it, which are pretty cool to have. So I got three of them. They could easily be used as a motor or a pump. And then I got, of course, the steering cylinder and then three other hydraulic cylinders, which I might even add a, a hydraulic powered three-point to that machine, which uh, this one here would be probably the perfect size for it. And then we've got the Roper 16T that I recently got done, which I need to run that again. Got the GT18 that I recently done. Oh, uh, that one I had running like a week ago. Then my GT18 Hydro Drive with the deck on it. Uh, that's in the shop now, along with my 75 ST16. And then uh, here's the key switch and hour gauge and stuff that I got off of uh, the real mower, which... This is the engine I was talking about that I'm going to put in the uh, that other 18.6, which, where is it? Has one little issue. This is supposed to be attached. So I was moving it around with the forklift, and suddenly I noticed the oil filter fell off. Yeah, I broke it right off the black. So that's going to need some repair. Luckily, it has... A part that bolts on there um you can see right here there's like three bolts there's a bolt there there's a bolt there and then there that i can take the whole thing off and i'm gonna try just jb welding it and hopefully that works otherwise i'm going to try aluminum welding it and if that fails i'm gonna have to just buy a new part to fix it um but what i got in my hand is the hour gauge off of the mower which probably can't see that because it's foggy but that is a 6034 for hours. So that is 6034 hours on that engine. Which I didn't even know a gas lawnmower engine could even last that long. But it does. It, I, I actually had it running. It ran pretty good. Um, there was a few other ones at the auction as well. But it was one of them things where I put the bid in at the wrong time. And I paid, I think, $175 for this stuff with, the, of course, the rest of the machine. And that's what the other person paid as well. So they paid what I wanted to pay, and I wasn't going to go any higher. Which seems like a lot, but, I mean, the engine works, which, as good as them engines are, that's easily worth it, considering a Chinese, like, 212 is, like, $150. Bucks. Um, and this is, you know, a real engine. Plus, I get all these hydraulic parts, the motors, which the motors, if you were to buy them new, are like 800 So, And then, of course, I got these other hoses here, another power steering unit, which is kind of a weird shape. 
or uh, it ain't gonna work for the sears that I'm gonna build, but it'll work for something. That's probably one of the biggest uh, oil filters I've seen. That's like one that you'd find on a truck. It's like bigger than my hand. That thing is huge. Um, another project, which I was starting to get into and then I stopped, is a, a while ago I had one of them cheap Harbor Freight generators that are like two cycle. And it decided to blow up like six months or so ago. So I cut it apart and I was working on a front mount Sears generator. So the plan is to take this rusted old mule drive, uh, cut it off kind of like here and here make some type of a bracket to go here and a pulley to go on the crankshaft and yeah have a front generator just like what they would have sold at the factory i started doing some of the wiring so i got one outlet wired up with a volt gauge and a little uh eight amp circuit breaker so that'll be cool once i actually feel like doing it which with my finger in the way that it is, I can't put a glove on it, so I can't weld or anything like that, or use the plasma cutter or anything, so kind of limited on what I can do. So that's why I had to use like the reciprocating saw to take this apart, which that was kind of interesting. Okay, so here is my forklift, my loader tractor, and a couple more machines. So this is the house I was talking about. So it's definitely tall. It's like 25, 26 feet high. And I'm not going to get into how far wide or deep it is um, or anything else right now. But this is the forklift I was talking about before that I actually got hurt on. So one of the things I did to it is I was showing you before the engine blew up. So it's got a 390 in it now. Which this thing, other than it starts kind of hard, it, it's a lot better than the Kawasaki. I already put about 15 hours on this engine since I put it in here which is kind of crazy. I changed the oil in it and it seems to be doing good. It has pretty decent power, a lot more fuel efficient than the other one. And then of course my PVC pipe uh, hydraulic reservoir started leaking. So I had to totally redo the bottom of that. So instead, I before I had a cap on there and just kind of rammed in there and siliconed on was the little uh, gray piece here that the hoses uh, clamped onto. But now I actually got it properly. There's a a four inch because it's four inch pipe a four inch to a two inch reducer and then a two inch uh pvc bushing which goes down to the uh one and a quarter inch uh thread which i put teflon tape on which has the little thing for the hoses slide on and now it don't leak so that was complicated but it's fixed um to build this building i use that forklift a lot and i also used my loader a lot which, good thing that this doesn't have a factory loader that it should have because I was able to put forks on here. And I, I was able to move pretty much all the metal beams that actually put the building together, like all of them on the side of the windows there. Even these uh, 12 foot tall ones here that weigh like 250 pounds, I was able to move them around and bring them over instead of using the big telehandler, which weighs like 10, 11,000 pounds. Keep driving that all over the place. Um, my Roper 18T is just randomly parked over here with the mower deck on it. And my GT16 is also parked there. These were in the enclosed trailer that I showed you in the inside before earlier. But I parked them here just because they're more accessible. But yeah, a um, lot of stuff coming up like I showed you. And uh, lots of stuff coming soon. So thanks for watching.